This video is sponsored by Coreality. Today we're gonna take a look at CR Scan Otter, the latest 3D scanner from Creality. Well, Creality is everywhere when it comes to 3D printing. They make a lot of software and hardware aimed at 3D scanning, like 3D printing software, 3D scanners, and of course 3D printers. But today, we're not gonna talk about that. Let's take a look at the scanner at hand because I feel like this one is actually one of the rare times I got exactly what I want out of a 3D scanner. The new CR Scan Otter is in many ways superior to the previous iterations from Creality. It has anti-shake capabilities, innovative 4 lens stereo vision with 8 infrared lights and 2 LED field lights. In addition to 0.02mm accuracy, 24-bit color scanning, and on top of that, it has the ability to scan black and metal objects, which is something that not all scanners can do, and it does this at a rate of 20 frames per second. So you can basically scan anything that ranges from a small coin to a full-size vehicle, and that's indoor or outdoors, which is a big jump from the other models and competition, as it feels like this scanner included all the features from previous models and tries to limit as many shortcomings that come with a scanner like this. It is also able to deliver a color 3D model with an accuracy of 0.2 millimeters. I read somewhere that the other meets class 1 laser safety. Apparently you can even scan yourself or other people without any risk to your eyes or your skin. And now let's see what's inside the box. The scanner comes in this fabric case. I don't know what to call it. Most reality scanner packages are like this one, with soft material and zippers all around. It comes with handles on each side to use the included strap. Inside the case, you're gonna find a black scanner mat. This is probably to key out the floor if you want to scan, because usually these scanners find it difficult to pick up dark colors. There are a bunch of tracking dots for scanning big objects or stuff with little features for the scanner to lock into. There is also a calibration board which has instructions on the back. We're gonna use this to calibrate our scanner in a bit. In the next pocket you're gonna find a couple of USB-C adapters, a cleaning cloth, a lanyard for the scanner to put around your wrist, and a strap for the case if you want to attach it to the hooks. Finally under the sleeve you're gonna find the power slash the data cable, which is a USB 2.0 USB-C cable. That's one cable for both your power and data and no more messing around with power bricks or multiple cables and all sorts of stuff. There is another USB to USB-C cable and a little owl inside the hashed act. It is a really good object to test the scanner as it has a lot of fine and big details in addition to being colored. Last but not least is the other scanner itself. On the bottom you have a camera mounted under a piece of rubber. At the back, you have the USB port as well as a couple of touch sensitive buttons to control the scan. One for starting and stopping the scan plus a negative buttons for adjusting exposure or brightness settings. It also doubles as an LED indicator based on what the scanner is doing. For example, green when it's ready to scan or flashes when it loses sync. From the front, let's peel this protective coat. You see the whole setup here. We have a lot of projectors and cameras. The big one at the center is the main projector and the two after that are close object cameras and the furthest on each side are long distance cameras. And this one here is for color capture with two LEDs at the top and bottom. Now let's try and scan something. I'll start with a test model. To start scanning, you're gonna first install the software called Creality Scan. Hook the scanner to the PC and you should see connected on screen. Now click New Scan. Give your project a name and a destination folder. More options are gonna be appearing. Here you can select exactly what type of scan you want and hovering over some of these options should give an explanation about what each parameter represents, things like object size, type of object, features, level of accuracy, and so on. And this will give the scanner an idea to better scan your object. Now hit scan and you should see a preview of what the scanner is seeing at the moment. On the top left, there is a black and white view, which I assume is for the main infrared exposure. Under that is the RGB color camera. As you may notice, the RGB camera is a bit on the side. That's why you should use the exposure preview when you try to center your object. 
Also, you may notice the three dots next to each preview. You can use this to adjust the exposure for infrared or RGB cameras. And by the way, you can switch the LED light from there. Although I feel like this is way overexposed, so I'm gonna turn it off. The rest of the screen is the object you are scanning with start, stop, pause, and undo buttons on the right. The last thing is this proximity meter, where you can tell whether you are too close or too far away from the object. Usually, you want to keep this within a good and optimal range, and hit start to start scanning. One thing that is going to help you a lot is a turntable, but you can manage just by moving around the object, capturing all possible angles. I actually have this turntable, and I forgot where I got it from, but I'm going to use it to scan. So all I have to do is put the object on the turntable and make sure my distance is optimal and scan away. But I have a pro tip for you after one or two rotations. Pause the scan by hitting the pause button in Reality Scan or at the back of the scanner. Now rotate your object and resume the scan. This way you can capture more areas and once you feel like you have captured everything, you need to hit stop scanning. Now you can see your point cloud, check everything and at this point, you can delete some of the junk geometry around your scan, or you can add more scan layers to capture more details. But what you really need to do is turn this point cloud to geometry, which is by hitting the optimization button. Pick the resolution that you prefer and let the software do its thing. This step, depending on the amount of data that you scanned and your system, it may take up to 5 minutes. Now, remesh your model by picking a number of faces and automatically fill in holes and gaps. After that, if you want to add a color texture, you can do so by using this photo icon right here. And that's it. So far, I like everything because it is really simple and accessible from the right panel. The great thing about the software as well is that it saves your work automatically. So at any point, if your machine suddenly turns off or you get a crash or whatever, your work is always saved. The other thing is that the process is non-destructive, which means you can go back at any point of the scanning process. If you look at the right, you will see an eye icon next to the color. But you can also go back to mesh, point cloud, because there's maybe an area that you probably didn't scan properly. You can create a new layer, scan the missing object, and process the mesh again. It's just a very convenient way of working, I think. Finally, you can export your mesh in one of these three formats. STL, Ply, or OBJ. And you can put this into a slicer and print it out. And here is the final result. You can see that the scanner manages to capture all the intricate details down to the individual feathers and also manages to get the proportions perfectly between the two models. And the cool thing is that I can probably get even better results if I do this more meticulously and carefully scan every single spot. But this should give you an idea of what the scanner can do. Finally, for the price, the scanner is going for $899. This is not cheap, but Creality is offering a 10% off through our channel if you click the link down in the description. But either way, I was really impressed with the accuracy and ease of use of this one. And if you want to learn more about the scanner, all the links will be in the description down below. And don't forget to let everyone know what you think in the comment section below. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.